Hey, what's up guys? Ken here from the Retro Toyscopates channel in Malaysia. Today, I'm taking a look at the Slingshot vehicle from Kenner's Series 2 of Mars Toys in 1986, MASK, which stands for Mobile Armored Strike Command. Now, the Slingshot was one of those really unique vehicles in the line that always fascinated me as a kid. The vehicle is in the RV category, which means that it's a recreational vehicle or motorhome, a large vehicle with compartments inside for people to live in while they go for a long distance trip from state to state. Now, when I was about you know nine years old as a kid in the 1980s, uh, that's when this toy came out and I was living in the small town of Jawa Baru in Malaysia and I had never seen a real vehicle like this personally. Okay, uh, nobody around owned something like this and I definitely never saw it anywhere on the road. That's probably why it really stuck out to me. Slingshot is a bit different from other mass vehicles in that all the action features are hidden within the vehicle and do not reveal themselves out on the surface. Hence, the basic outer van structure always remains the same. Now, this isn't going to be a review of the actual toy itself in the traditional sense. Today, I want to talk about some of the issues with Slingshot as a toy because this toy can be problematic, okay? It's filled with problems and if you're getting a used unit on the secondary market, chances are high that you're going to face one of these issues I'm going to be highlighting here. Now, if you've clicked on the video and you are familiar with the Slingshot, you probably know what I'm talking about, but we're going to get into it in the video itself. So let's get rolling. Okay, so in a perfect world, this would be how your slingshot unit would operate every time. Pressing this button located on the back of the vehicle will cause both halves of the RV to split open. Let's check this out, okay? Yeah, pretty cool, right? Now once inside, you're transported into a world of wonder. Instead of having living quarters and places for people to sleep in and maybe make breakfast and coffee, what you get instead with this RV is the interior of what appears to be a large command center. Complete, as you can see, with stickers all around, all right, which show you how the vehicle is probably being used to monitor both the weather and geographical patterns. Very cool stuff. Now what's in the middle, of course, is the centerpiece of the slingshot, the hidden red jet. And the inclusion of this bonus vehicle is fantastic because it's like you're getting two vehicles with one toy. Okay, now let's check out the next stage of the transformation. Now, pressing on this other button on the side here, will raise the platform that the jet is placed on. Let's check this thing out, yeah. Now this will also cause the side wings to be extended outward. Let's do it again. See that? So the platform raises up and the side wings of the jet extend outward. And now it's ready for launch mode. Now the platform also has lasers attached to the end and when you roll the vehicle along, you see how the platform rotates so that you can blast the enemy from any direction. Really cool stuff. Okay, so the jet is of course removable and it comes with a cockpit area for the pilot to be seated in. Now the pilot of the vehicle being the cool Ace Riker with his ricochet mask. This figure has always been a standout for me. In fact, I listed him as one of my top 5 mask action figures of all time. Go check out that video too on my channel. I'll be putting the link for it in the description box below. Okay, so you got the pilot comfortably seated in the cockpit. And the jet is actually pretty heavily armed too. It comes with uh, lasers in the front and also this large yellow bomb underneath. Now the bomb can be dropped 
on the enemy at just a push of a button. Okay, so that's the basic setup of the slingshot. Now let's get down to talking about one of the vehicle's major issues, which is where most owners of the toy find that after a period of time, the two halves of the RV which split open in transform mode and reveal the hidden jet inside are then unable to close back up properly, okay? Uh, instead of closing smoothly like what you see here, they in fact find a gap right in the middle on the top of the vehicle. Now this open gap is caused by the wings of the interior jet not being able to close back together properly. You see how on the platform here, the wings of the jet are sticking together to the body of the jet, okay, and that's how it's supposed to be. But in a faulty unit, something within the interior mechanism of the jet is causing the wings to expand outward when they shouldn't, all right? And it's knocking against the sides of the interior of the van and causing the van to not be able to close itself properly. Now, I've handled a lot of slingshot units over the past seven years or so. Sometimes you're lucky and you get one that works perfectly and other times you're just stuck with a unit with bad wings. Either way, there's something about the mechanism that controls the wings which is causing this problem. So finally, after sheer curiosity and frustration, I decided to open up the jet to see just what is it that's inside this thing. Now, the underside of the jet has got three screws in place. Okay, you see them very clearly here. There's one here at the top, and one there in the middle, and one right there at the end. So what you got to do to get this jet apart is just to remove these three screws. Just take these three screws out, and then you'll be able to separate the two halves of the jet and get into the inside. Okay now, I've used a spare broken jet for the purpose of this disassembly exercise. The jet has now been taken apart the two halves separated and there's three things that I want to remind you of before you proceed. Firstly, do make sure that you keep the three screws someplace safe so you won't have them misplaced. Secondly, when you're taking something apart like the jet here, always remember to take photos of what you're doing so that you remember how everything looks like when you need to put it back. And thirdly, this right here is a 35 year old toy so do remember to go easy on it because it's fragile. One thing that I wasn't expecting and which completely startled me when I took this thing apart was when this section of the jet fell right out. Hell, man! I didn't know what it was, okay? It made such a loud sound on the table and I thought that the jet was self-destructing. Actually, it's this piece of solid molded die-cast metal that goes into the nose of the cockpit. And no kidding, man, this thing is heavy. No wonder the jet feels like it has some weight to it, even though the exterior has no metal parts. Now this was a bit of a pleasant surprise, I gotta say, and it does add to the sturdiness of the entire vehicle. Okay, so now we're checking out the wings on the jet, and this is the area where all the problems lie. Now I was a bit taken aback to see how simple the mechanics were. In fact, I'm beginning to understand why there's so many problems associated with the jet and its wing section. You see how easy everything just goes together and the wings are all controlled by this one simple spring call mechanism that's in the center. This thing right here, okay? Now, in a perfectly operating unit, this called up spring has to be placed correctly according to the provided cut sections in the plastic. You see that? So this bit goes in like that. Make sure it's all properly in place. And then you've got this other section here that's supposed to connect to the right wing of the jet. Okay, so check out what I'm trying to do here. As I said, this section here is supposed to connect or be balanced against the right wing of the jet. Okay, it's supposed to be balanced against it, but somehow, Somehow it just can't, okay? It can't because apparently there's a broken section, okay? There's a broken tab, a tiny little plastic tab that's supposed to be on top of this section here, okay? A tiny plastic tab, okay? Um, how do I know this? 
because hell it broke right off okay and i don't know where the thing is all right um uh, but yeah it's such a fragile little thing and i can't believe that you know okay that was the only thing that's basically holding up the spring mechanism on the right section of the jet okay so with that thing in place uh, i can see how the jet wings would work properly all right okay uh, but apparently you know this unit is broken okay and that's why you know the wings are going to be loose and uh, the only option here is to probably just get uh, you know a replacement unit you know but uh, you know I'm surprised that uh, you know that the tabs uh, on these toys okay uh, are really small and fragile and uh, it reminds me of the switchblade honestly you guys remember the mass switchblade, right? It had those tiny tabs on the side of the jet, you know, which held the wings in place when it was supposed to be transformed back into its copter mode. The tabs were so easily breakable and it's the sole reason why so many used switchblades in the market are unable to transform back to their copter modes, okay? Uh, Kenna Toys, okay, which produced the mass toys back in the day, uh, Looks like they sure were fond of using tiny plastic tabs to support intricate transformations on their toys. So guys, look, if you're facing problems with your slingshot unit, problems with the two halves of the van not being able to close properly, or with the wings on the jet being loose, what you can do is open up the jet inside, like how I just did in the video, and check out the coil mechanism that's controlling the wings. Check it out to make sure that everything's in place and that there's no broken parts to the wing. If the coil has somehow become dislodged, place it back like how it's supposed to be and you'll most likely be able to solve and fix your broken slingshot unit. Now, I couldn't do that here because there's a small part to the right jet wing that's permanently broken, but at least I know how everything works and now, hopefully, so do you. Okay guys, so that's the video. Uh, I hope that you know if you guys stayed on until the end of the video, I do thank you for your time. And I do hope that, you know, you guys found the video informative and that it's helpful to you guys if you need to get your slingshot unit fixed. Uh, do help me by sharing the video out, you know, okay, leaving me a like and a comment. I want to know what you guys think. And of course, do subscribe to the channel and all the support that I can get to take this thing right to the top. Thanks, guys. I'll catch all of you again real soon.